so a very good evening to you all today uh, we are going to start the video on class 8th yesterday we have learned about uh, asexual reproduction in plants and we have just started the vegetative propagation today we will go in a depth of vegetative propagation now vegetative propagation as i have said yesterday itself earlier also it was informed that uh, vegetative propagation is the process by the help of which the plant grows but the reproductive part is not involved means seeds are not involved only the root stems and the <clears throat> leaves are involved so today we will go more in a depth into it now let us uh, let us start the uh, class very nicely so uh, in page number 32 we are having two examples at the top itself that is uh, corm and bulk uh, i'm sorry corm and bulb not bulk it is bulb so corm and bulb what is corm and what is bulb corm is a kind of vegetable which is growing underground and it is having scaly leaves covered within itself that scaly leaves is a reservoir of food which allows the corm to grow similarly have you seen the onion the oval part of the onion that is the bulb of the onion in page number 32 itself, figure 2.7 and 2.8 shows corm and the bulb. In the onion, what happens, you know? In the onion, we can see the bulb. In the bulb, the outer part of the bulb. In the bulb, the al already the uh, vegetative propagation takes place. But outside of the bulb, we can see the scaly leaves. Again, the scaly leaves will reserve as a food reservoir. It will reserve the food there for the growing bulb now once the bulb started to grow what will happen it will grow into a new onion correct so corm and bulb both are having scaly leaves so it is surrounded by the hay scaly leaves their swollen base corm for corm also a swollen base is there for bulb also a swollen base is there so both the swollen bases are well covered covered by what it is covered by the scaly leaves scaly leaves acting as a food reservoir it will reserve the food for the comb and as well as for the bulb respectively and finally what will happen it will grow as a new vegetal vegetable corn as well as the onion now with this note we will move forward so how the vegetative propagation takes place by aerial step first of point is by aerial stem now what is this aerial stem in some plants like grasses of course, grasses are not plants, they are just the simplest uh, autotrophs or simplest form of photosynthetic organism. Like grass, let us take the example for grass. What happens when the grass will grow or else we can take the example of mint, mint also. When the mint will grow, the branch which is very much, means what we can say, which is very much closer to the soil, automatically will go in touch of the soil. I repeat. For grass also, as well as for mint, the slender part, slender part means the thin part of the particular mint or the, uh, what we can say, particular mint or the grass, the slender part, the thinnest part is in contact with the soil, very close contact with the soil. So what will happen, since it is in very closely contact with the soil, automatically the soil will receive that slender part of the grass or the mint and slowly, slowly it will grow. This is by aerial stem. Next is by root. What happens? The root, it is it is just natural vegetative propagation I am talking about. Not the man-made or the artificial one. Just the naturally how it is happening. So aerial stem, in, in aerial stem what happens? The slender part of the grass means the thinnest part of the grass or the mint plant which is very much closer to the soil will go in touch of the soil and it will grow as a new organism. Here in by roots what happens? The roots are having small small adventitious birds which when come in contact with the soil will start to grow as a new organism. Similarly, the leaf. We all know bryophyllum leaf. The bryophyllum bio phy leaves are quite big in shape and they are having at the side of the leaves. For example, I am showing you the diagram over here. That is <coughs> figure 2.11 in page number 33, I guess. Yeah, in page number 33, this is figure 2.11 about bryophyllum. So these lateral you can see, you no, know, this one, this lateral birds, these are known as the adventitious birds or it is also called as notches in literal, in literal term, in literature term. 
Now, when this notches will come in contact with the soil, this will start to grow as a new organism. That is what the main part of this. So, by aerial stem, by roots as well as by leaves, means roots, stems and leaves, all the three are involved in the vegetative propagation by natural way. Now, when man comes to know about this natural vegetative propagation, man started to do manipulation. Now, how the man started to manipulate it? The manipulation is done in a several processes. So, the first artificial, now this three from by leaves, by roots and by stem, we learned this is the, how the natural way of vegetative propagation carries on. But now, when we are learning about man-made, that is the artificial vegetative rep propagation, there are three basic things. First of all, cutting. Cutting means, let us take an example of this pen. Let, let us assume this pen as a stem. Now, when we will cut this stem, we will cut it into three or four pieces and each three or four pieces we will sow it under the soil. In such a way that half part of the cut piece will be out and half part will be within the soil. So automatically it will grow as a new organism. Especially cutting is done for uh, bougainvillea flower, tamarind and lemon. So we can take any stem, we can cut it and we can place it in the soil. We can sow it in the soil in such a way that half part will be at the top and half part, half part will be out of the soil and half part will be within the soil. Okay, so let's say this is the cut piece of the particular, this is the cut piece of the particular uh, plant, either lemon or tamarind, okay, or bougainvillea. So, if at all we will sow it in such a way that half part means till here, it will be, till here it will be within the soil and this part will be above the soil. Then it will, after a few days, it will grow as a new organism. So, this is the man-made way of cutting. Next one is the grafting. That is a, grafting is a bit difficult method because here we need to take care that plant should not be infected. Now, let us take the example. In grafting, two things are there. Stock and scion. S-C-I-O and scion and S-T-O-C-K stock. Scion is the cut part and stock is the main part. Now, let's say this is a red color pen. So, let us assume that this is a red rose plant. And I want to grow a pink rose on the red rose plant. So genetically both are same. Red rose and pink rose. There is slight different, slight difference, but grafting can make it possible. What I will do is this red rose plant will act as a stock. And this pink rose, just a pink rose will act as a scion or a pink rose leaflet. Leaflet means cut part of the branch where it is intact with its leaves. So what we will do here, we will just take the stock. Stock is already intact of the red uh, red plant, red rose plant. We will take the scion, means the cut part of the pink rose. And slightly we will make an incision over here in the stem. Incision means a cut. Now, now let's say it is the stem of the red rose plant. We will make one incision over here. And we will fix this scion, means the pink pink rose leaflet over here in this cleft in such a way that it should not fall down then we will tie it with a cotton rope or any disinfectant rope means it should not have any contamination of microorganisms otherwise it will infect both the stock and skin and in such a way we have to tightly pack it so that there should not be any contamination from external means from outside no microorganisms should enter there should not be any gap so inside the cleft we will just place the skin in the stock. So this is acting as a stock, red rose plant, pink rose leaflet is acting as a scion. We will tie it properly and after a few days we can see this scion will become naturally a part of stock which is a very magnificent result and in the same plant we can get two varieties of flower. We can get two varieties of flower. Red rose will also grow and pink rose will also grow. So this is a very good experiment we can do at home also but we have to take care of one thing that stock and scion must be prevented from microorganism now next one is layering what we are doing in layering it is also a simple process <coughs> so layering in layering we can do like uh, let us uh, assume the branch branch of a uh, china rose plant so what we are doing here, the lowest branch of the china rose, which is very much in closer to the soil, we will bend that branch, 
will bend that branch and will place it under the soil and we will keep some weight so that it should not be pushed outside so it not should so that it should not be thrown outside we will just bend that branch the lower part of the branch which is very much in close contact with the soil we will put it into the soil and we will put a weight and we will just wait for few days we will find that branch has grown fully then we can cut it from the parent plant then we can cut it from the parent plant and we can see the result is amazing that branch will itself grow as a tree or a plant so i hope you do like it just uh, go through this explanation properly try to understand about the different method surely you will get it please understand the video and match it with your text thanks a lot